Good thing you were too wired to sleep, Louise. I don't mind filling in for Sam tonight, Hank. Not with everything that's going on at Charity's house. Yeah, I wish Miguel would call and let us know whether they got Charity and her mom out of that fire. When Sam called and said the fire was out of control. I still find it hard to believe my brother Sam is the chief of police. Well, you were the one who was always getting in trouble with the cops, not Sam. Yeah, it's pretty weird being in this place again. Remember all those times I got hauled in here for pulling some prank? Yeah, you were pretty wild as a kid. Weren't we all? Yeah, I guess we were. Wow. You have a file on Sheridan Crane like she's a common criminal? Well, she's no different from anyone else who breaks the law. Problem is, she and the rest of her family think they're above the law. I think you're too hard on Sheridan. She's a lovely lady. She's just got a lot on her mind. Well, I don't doubt that, Hank. I'm sure there's something that she's doing her best to hide from everyone. Like what? Who knows? But I'll bet it's killing her that I'm trying to find out. Like I said, she thinks she's above the law. Well, she didn't act like that tonight. when She freaked out in that magician's box at the lobster shack. Do it stuck! Sheridan, hang on, okay? Don't panic. We'll get you out. Being in that box scared the hell out of her. Yeah, she wasn't her usual high and mighty self. I just wish I knew why she went so crazy. Well, she's probably claustrophobic and didn't realize how bad it was until she got in the box. No. If she was claustrophobic, she wouldn't have put herself in a situation like that. I just wish I knew why she said it wasn't my fault and I didn't mean it. So what are you going to do? Are you going to bring her in and grill her for freaking out? I may be curious as to why she freaked out, but I hope she never sets foot in here again. I've had my fill of Sheridan Crane. Well, you're going to have to deal with her at the youth center. She'll be working with you. Don't remind me. I still can't believe the judge sentenced her to 100 hours of community service at the youth center, knowing that I'm the director. Well, she might surprise you, Louise. I mean, think about it. You're great in dealing with the boys, and Sheridan might be a big help to you in dealing with the girls. How can the daughter of a billionaire relate to the girls who come into the youth center? Because she was a teenager once herself. She'll do a good job. In fact, I wish I could get my niece Kay to come in and talk to her. About what? Well, I'm just concerned about what Kay was doing in Miguel's room tonight. Don't you think that was kind of strange? <laughs> Man, you've been away too long. I mean, sure, your niece Kay is a good girl, but she's always up to some kind of mischief with her friend Simone. Exactly what kind of mischief has my niece Kay been up to? Don't worry, it's nothing serious. Just typical teenage stuff. Well, that covers a long list. Give me an example. Okay. Mr. Harmony Hunk contest. Harmony Hunk? Mm-hmm. <laughs> it was held this summer at the carnival. Kay and Simone claimed it was your sister-in-law Grace's idea. But I have sneaking suspicions that they planned it. It's a way to watch a bunch of guys, including yours truly, and my brother Miguel, parade around in swim trunks. Hey, I'll have to remember that. Maybe I can organize a Miss Harmony contest. It'd be a great way to reintroduce myself back to the local beauty. I have a feeling that you don't need a contest to do that, Hank. Man, I can't believe my niece Kay is old enough to be interested in boys. Seems like just yesterday she was all excited about some doll I brought her back from Japan. I mean, look at Teresa and Miguel. It's like your brother and sister and my nieces just seem to spring up overnight. You've been away a while, Hank. You know, I remember holding Jessica in my arms when she was only six months old. It was the first time I saw her. And then the next time, she's riding around on a bicycle with training wheels, and now she and Kay are in high school. Come on, you've been back in between those times. Yeah, but it's like they're whole other people every time. They're good kids. They've got good parents. You know, my brother Sam really lucked out when he met Grace. She's a good woman. She's got nice kids, a steady job, a nice home. He's got it all. I really envy him. Someone put something in my coffee? I can swear that I heard Hank Bennett, Mr. Wonderlust, actually say that he was envious of his stable, settled-down brother. I mean, he used to make fun of a life like that. Maybe I changed my mind. Now I know I'm hallucinating. You know, for years, the only way we knew where you were or what you were up to was from the occasional postcard from Rio or Singapore or South Africa. Now you're talking about ripping up your passport and staying in a stable life? You know, I remember my last trip, I was... Eating in some dive in Algiers, and I got to wondering when was the last time I'd had a meal cooked by someone I knew. Or maybe it was listening to how hung up Miguel was on a, this new girl of his. 
You remember when we got to talking about how we might have missed out on finding the right girl? I remember. Well, I figured you'd be settled down yourself by now. Hey, I still got responsibilities. You know, maybe when Miguel and Teresa go off to college. Well, that's great. That leaves the field wide open for me. You'll be busy working, and I'll be dating up a storm, stealing that perfect woman right from under your nose. Don't bet on it. Hey, have we ever gone for the same woman? Not that I recall. You've always had different tastes in women. Yeah, you've always liked those sweet little wholesome types. I like my women with an edge. Say, so what do you think would happen if we fell for the same woman? No contest. I'd win. Oh, is that Lopez Fitzgerald ego still lives? Come on, man. The truth is the truth. Besides, I can't picture you settled down with one woman, a few kids, a dog, and a white picket fence. Why not? I've tried everything else. It might be a goof. Hank, marriage is more than a goof. It's a serious commitment. Besides, you can't take care of a family. You don't even have a steady job. You sound just like Sam. Meaning? Meaning you worry about the details. You know, life and lady luck will provide. Man, you're in for a big surprise. Hey, I'm an optimist. You know, besides, who said that I have to provide everything? I could end up with a rich woman. You'd marry a woman for her money. This is the dawning of a new millennium, buddy. You know, this isn't the stone age where a man's got to run out and kill all the zebras. How could you live with yourself knowing your wife was paying for everything? Very well, thank you. You know, we've had this conversation before, and I think you're all bluff, Bennett. I'm just more liberated than you. A man's gonna have some pride, Hank. You wanna know what pride will get you? Zip. A man's gotta do what a man's gotta do. Well, what exactly have you been up to in your travels around the world? Relax, Louise. I was just joking. I'm worried about you, Hank. <laughs> I'd check you out on the computer, but I'm afraid of what I might find out. Would you do that, Louise? I went to this three-day party in Shanghai that I've been dying to remember. I think I had a good time. I met this gorgeous redhead, but I can't remember her name. Hmm. Listen, I got enough trouble tracking down criminals and tracking down redheads. Look, I'm gonna go see if I can find anything out about Grace's sister. <sighs> you mind if I stick around for a while? Shoot yourself. Just stay out of trouble. I'll try. Access a video game. Do you know how to pull up solitaire? What are you up to, pal? Hey, hey, hey. Don't worry, Art. He's Chief Bennett's brother. Believe me, he's no master criminal. Well, you better hang back. I don't know what I'm gonna find in there. Come in now, Hank. I don't think these crooks are dangerous. Sheridan, what are you doing? That's a good question. I'll bet you have a good answer. I'll start with you, Counselor. You want to give me your story? I'm sure you've got a good reason for being here, but are you all right? I mean, you look a little pale. I'm fine. Just a little annoyed that once again Officer Lopez Fitzgerald is in my face. Ah, he's just doing his job. You look like he could use a good night's sleep. It's been a long night, as you know. Thanks again for taking me for a drive after I got myself involved in that horrible magic act. And for not asking any questions. We're a true gentleman. Please. She's not in great shape. Let's go. Not until I find out what they're really doing here. Didn't I tell you that there was something going on with her? Luis, 
You're a cop. You've got a suspicious mind. All I saw was a beautiful woman. Look, Hank, I know you're not a cop, but aren't you a little suspicious of what those two are doing in a newspaper morgue at this hour? Not really. Well, I am. And it's my job to follow my nose when I have suspicions. I don't care how rich or powerful the cranes are. Ethan and Sheridan are covering something up. I want to know what, and I intend to find out.